So this video kind of like falls into all my other little videos I'm doing at the moment which is uh, about the conversion or the reconversion of my uh, VW camper van. So this kind of makes sense to anybody that wants to install 12 volt electrics um, into their camper van. doesn't have to be a VW or whatever um, but obviously everything I'm going to show relates to my camper van obviously and um, hopefully I'm going to explain it in a fairly simple format so that anybody can get it and it'll also work out for anybody else's camper van then. So what we want to do then is start off with the vehicle battery and connect your 16 millimeter red cable to the positive side of the vehicle battery and then you know within sort of like a foot or something like that place your 80 amp fuse then run the rest of this red cable through obviously the bulkhead of the vehicle uh, into the back near where your leisure battery is going to be and where you're going to have all your electrics so the next thing we're doing is installing a split charge relay also known as the voltage sensitive circuit or something like that uh, essentially what it does is it's a little special circuit um, that's designed to detect a higher voltage coming in and once it reaches that voltage it's like 13.7 14 volts something it then allows the actual power to come through this cable you've installed so you can then charge your leisure battery this is basically so that if your engine's running up front and your vehicle battery is really low all the power is going to go to the vehicle battery first and only when that's topped up and everything's running hunky-dory will that power from your vehicle the alternator then come through the split charge relay to your leisure battery so there are three wires coming out of the um, split charge relay uh, essentially there's an in for the red wire we've just spoken about coming from the battery and then there's an out which goes to the other positive terminal of your leisure battery again using the same 16 millimeter cable and then there's a small black cable and that's got to be grounded to your vehicle's chassis so once we've got this in place then, well, let's talk about the grounding of your vehicle chassis. Uh, you need to find a part of your chassis that's obviously going to be hidden out of the way. Um, it doesn't have to be a hole in the side or the floor. It can be part of the structure of the internal structure or something like that. But it needs to be that you grind all the paint off and you find, you know, drill a hole or if there's a hole there already, clear the paint off so that when you're connecting all your cables to it you've got a really solid ground connection then um, and this needs to be connected to the negative side of your leisure battery so your leisure battery now is going to have a positive side going to the split charge relay from the split charge relay to the vehicle battery with the inline fuse and from the negative side of your leisure battery it's going to go to the ground of your vehicle um, Along with that, what I'm suggesting is to install a grounding plate, so a bunch of connectors that you can then wire in all your other devices to get a good ground from. And one of those devices would be the little black cable coming from the split charge relay. So once you get your ground all set up, the next thing we need to think about now is the 12 volt, the positive side of things. So coming out of your leisure battery on the positive side, you need to still be using that 16 millimeter cable. And we're gonna go for safety here and we're gonna go for an isolator switch. The isolator switch just means that you can switch off everything should there be a fire fault or anything like that or say you're leaving your vehicle for you know a few weeks and you don't want anything potentially in the background to drain the power you can just isolate it and that's it shut off then the only thing that will happen is that it will get a charge from your vehicle battery um, every time your engine started it will get that charge but other than that there's no power being taken out of the leisure battery with this safety isolator in place now coming out from the other side of the isolator still using the 16 millimeter cable you go to your fuse box um, and that's the end of your 16 millimeter cable the reason why i've been saying 16 millimeter 16 millimeter 16 millimeter is because it's rated really high what do i mean by that well it's a dead thick cable um, and it can supply loads of power down it which batteries need to transfer energy between each other the 16 millimeters rates uh, to 110 amps so that's an awful lot of power and it just means that nothing's going to set on fire in your van no cables are going to melt that kind of thing so from your fuse box and your grounding box now um, you've got the ability to start wiring things in so let's get on to that 
Um, say for example USB sockets or something like that, um, they're only a light kind of use things, um, they only require a little bit of power. So we're going to use two and a half millimeter cable to connect all our devices up now, whether it's the fridge, the water pump, the USB sockets, the 12 volt accessory sockets. Um, or the fridge or anything like that, we're going to use two and a half millimeter cable. Why are we going to use that? Well, because that's got a rating of around about 27 amps. So that's going to cover everything else you can connect to it. It's cheaper, it's easier to run, it's more flexible as well. So we're at the fuse box, what should we wire in first? Well, let's go for USB sockets, dead easy, or 12 volt accessories like SIG lighter sockets. And um, because you're basically just taking um, the connector from this, there, uh, two wires out of the back, which is your red and your black, um, two and a half millimeter for both. From the back of that, you're going to do the black straight to your um, grounding block, and from the red side of the back of that, from the positive side, you're going to go to a fuse. Um, to the fuse block, connect that in, and then the fuse that you put in um, really relates to the device. So if you look on that, it says that one of them is a two amp um, socket and the other one is a one amp. So one's fast charge USB and one's standard charge. That's only three amps, so that means a five amp uh, fuse is best for that. Uh, why don't they do less? I don't know, I've never seen less than a five amp fuse. So that's why I say that. Uh, the next one is, say for example, your fridge. Now my fridge has got a switch inside the fridge. So that's the way I switch it on and set the temperature. So I don't need a separate switch or anything like that for my fridge. I'm just gonna wire it straight in. So again, the same sort of thing. You take the black wire from the fridge and you connect it to the grounding point that you've got down there. And then you take the red wire and connect it to a fuse. Now I've looked into this um, and a 20 amp fuse is about right for my fridge. So that if it's on max in the summer months when it's warm and it's keeping my beer nice and chilled, it's not gonna melt any wires or blow any fuses or anything like that. Um, another really tricky one, let's get into the, how do I wire the lights up then? Because the lights need to be switched. Now I've got a special switch, so I've got an on off for the lights, and it's also got a dimming little action as well, uh, and I've used LED lights. One, two, three, four, five, six. I've got, sorry, I've got eight LED lights, and they're all daisy chained, which means that all the wires go to the next one, to the next one, to the next one, so that only at some point um, around the back there do all the wires connect together and then the ground goes to the ground, the black obviously goes to the ground, and then the red goes to the back of this switch. Now the other side of this switch is another red cable that comes out, it goes to my fuse, and in there I've put a 5 amp fuse which is more than enough. And even with LED lights, this dimmer still works, it's a special LED dimmer circuit. Now if you notice I'm using nice little neat sockets, these are called CBE sockets and surrounds. They just finish things off better and they do all sorts of different inserts that go in there. So it means you can have like, you know, USB, 12 volt accessories, 240 or dimmer lights, or like I've got on the back, I've got a little uh, gauge that sort of shows me the voltmeter of, uh, of the power of my battery. So they're great for that kind of interchange. So we've done um, the basics now. Uh, let's move on to something a little bit more tricky. Let's go for the water pump. Now your water pump obviously needs to know when to turn on and off. You can either have a switch or most taps these days come with a little micro switch built into the tap. So your tap will have two wires coming out of it. Your pump will have two wires coming out of it. How do you connect it all up and make it work? Well, that's dead easy. Actually, the two wires coming out of your tap are just one wire and in the middle is the micro switch. So ignore the fact that anything else is happening. It's just one wire split with the switch in the middle. The switch, open the tap, is then made. So I suggest then that we give the tap 12 volts. So we take from the fuse box our red wire, take it to one side of the tap wire, and then we connect it up. We then use the other side of the tap wire to go to the pump. Now my pump, really fitting in with the red and black wire theme here, came with two wires which were blue and brown. Now in the 240 volts world, blue and brown relate to neutral and live. So I kind of like worked out on that kind of scheme there. So brown is live and blue is neutral. So I went for neutral being ground. So I took blue back to ground and then brown was my other side of my tap switch. 
So the tap then went to brown and sure enough, when I switch my tap on now, I get water coming out. Absolutely fantastic. So the other things obviously wired in there, like I say, I've got a, a little 12 volt gauge. I do recommend having some way of monitoring your battery levels. So a little 12 volt gauge, all you would do tiny little wires that come out the back of it just tap into connect into like the wires that go to your usb or the wires that go to um your 12 volt accessory socket so something like that something that's permanent so it's not like your lighting where it's switched on and off something that's permanently on so that you can actually see the voltage at all times obviously with my isolator switch i can switch that off and then everything goes dead and my power obviously the the voltmeter drops as well at the same time now the next thing i've wired in is an inverter um basically it, it's kind of an odd one but it's going to be for laptop charging or um like um my drone batteries that kind of thing things i don't have a 12 volt charging system for so that you know, if I want to charge my laptop or my drone batteries, which I will want to do, um, I can still use it even though I've not got electric hookup. Um, the inverter is a 300 watt inverter, which means that it sits just under the right ampage um, that I can connect it all up through the fuse panel and everything else um, and put it on a 20 amp fuse. Um, if you are running something like a kilowatt inverter, I mean, that's a big inverter. Really, you should be wiring straight into the battery terminals on that one with a really big inline fuse as well, and because that's going to be drawing a lot of current potentially and could be starting melting wires if you're not using the right wires. The wires that come with the inverter should be thick enough um, so that they won't melt or something like that. But I mean, that's that's something that's beyond what I wanted to get involved with because I don't need a kilowatt of power. So I've gone for a 300 watt inverter, which is more than enough for my 150 watt um, battery charger for my uh, drone and my 110 watt battery charger for my laptop. Um, basically what I've done with this one is I've got a small inline switch, but I wanted one that I could put out of the way a little bit because we're only going to be using the inverter you know, every few days, maybe something like that. So what I've actually done is I've wired the inverter back through the fuse box so one side goes to my grounding panel the other side goes to the fuse box got a 20 amp fuse in there I've then wired uh, one socket on the wall which is over my fridge to the inverter um, essentially because your inverter just comes with a, a plug socket on the back I've just wired that to another plug that goes in the back of the inverter uh, I've stuck the inverter down there in the depths of my little engine room should we call it uh, which is basically where all my other gubbins electrics wires are so it's all down there and then I've run two wires up to a little switch that just comes on the other side of this wall here out of the way and then if I need my inverter I can just switch it on and then that's done that will give me 240 volts to charge my you know sort of low wattage devices now what I wanted to say about inverters I've seen people saying that they're wiring inverters up to charge their smartphones or tablets um, and I'm just a bit confused by this because it's it's like a whole huge waste of energy. You're asking your 12 volt battery to power an inverter. So that's instantly going to turn into 240 volts or, you know, 110 volts, depending on where you are in the world. So that's a massive boo. That's kind of like, going ah, the battery's basically having to power this massive inverter to make the energy go up to that jump. You're then plugging in a wall socket which is making that 110 volts, 240 volts, jump back down to about five volts, because that's all it takes to charge a phone. USB is five volts, thereabouts. So you've gone 12 volt battery, massive big jump to 110 or 240 volts, massive big drop again, but the inverter doesn't know really what's going on. It's still trying to produce this 240 or 110 volts, You've then got this wall socket that's trying to convert it back down to USB 5 volts. What a massive waste of power. Install some USB um, sockets in there. And then your, your leisure battery is going to last so much longer if you're not using the inverter for something like that. Now, the other side of it, I've seen people saying, yeah, but I need to charge my camera batteries. And the inverter is the only way to do that. Probably not. I would say if you went on eBay or Amazon, that for every camera you've got, all the DSLR cameras I've certainly got, my wife's got, we've all now uh, been able to find USB chargers. Fair enough, they take a bit longer to charge the battery, um, but they still work. Still work absolutely fine. 
So that's a way that you can then basically get more out of your leisure battery. I've got a 110 amp per hour leisure battery. Uh, it can power the fridge, all our lights, everything else that we do for around about four days without needing the engine starting or, you know, sort of plugging in 240 volts or whatever to charge it that way. 240 volts as well is the next thing. So yes, I have 240 volts. Um, it's a bit of a waste in all your fairness because I've only got two, two circuits wired up. I've got one 240 volt socket there and then my other 240 volt circuit is actually for a battery charger to charge the leisure battery. I've kind of done it as a backup uh, not because I want to go and hook up on sites and stuff like that um, but mainly because I went through the debacle of solar panel or um, to get a generator. Um, and I actually chose generator in the end. So because I've got a little generator, 240 volt generator, it means I can plug that into my van to then charge all my other devices, plus it's gonna charge the leisure battery in the van. So on my 240 volt circuit, uh, my connection's under the bonnet because it's nice and clean there. It's not gonna get wet or dirty. I don't have to get on my hands and knees to climb under the van, and I didn't have to drill a hole in the outside of my van to connect a stupid inlet to. So that's where it's connected. It runs right next to my 12 volt cable that comes in the back there. So a great little installation of the two cables. The RCD uh, consumer unit is down there next to all my other wiring in my little engine room. And my two circuits from there are both um, basically coming out. One to that socket and one to the uh, battery charger which then charges my leisure battery. Um, it's all working fine. If you know how to wire a plug, then you can wire up RCD 240 volt electrics, 110 electrics. Obviously, you've got three wires. One's an earth in the UK. That's yellow and green. Uh, then we have a neutral, which is brown, and then a live. So we have a neutral, which is blue, and then brown, which is live. The reason why I always remember those right way is because most fuses in a plug are brown. So the brown wire goes to the brown fuse. That's my way of looking at it anyway. So this little drawing that I've done represents what we've talked about so far, ignoring mains electricity. So this is just 12 volts. So the black line around the outside represents the vehicle chassis. So it's black equals ground. We've then got the grounding block, uh, which is where all your cables connect to on the ground side of things. And we've got the vehicle battery. The vehicle battery is grounded. So from the vehicle battery's positive side, we kind of got our big um, 16 millimeter mega positive cable and uh, we've got our fuse that then goes straight to our split charge relay which is the bit that starts to charge our leisure battery so from the other side of the split charge relay um, we're going to the leisure battery notice as well that the ground from the split charge relay is actually going to the uh, the chassis ground so the leisure battery itself is also grounded there if you look at it. And then the positive side of the leisure battery, we're going to the isolator switch. Uh, and this is so that we can switch everything off. Like if you take your van in for a service and you don't want people messing around in the back, you can actually turn this all the way down to that position. So passed off and take this out, which means that no one can then turn everything back on and start messing around with it. Again, with our mega 16 millimeter cable to the fuse box, and that's us all kind of fused up. Now again, with this fuse box that I'm showing that I've used, if a fuse blows or there's a problem with the circuit, these LEDs light up, making it easy to find out, you know, if something's not working, what's going on. Uh, basically, the tiny little wire, you know, which is the two and a half millimeter wire, then goes out to each item is individually fused. And then obviously on the other side of it, the ground wire comes back to the grounding block. And that's pretty much it really. Uh, it's what we've talked about. Uh, again, I've not mentioned here about wiring up pumps or 12 volt sockets or uh, fridges or lights or anything like that. Um, those are all fairly straightforward. This is just to give you a rough idea of what it should look like at the end. So that pretty much covers the electrical installation in my van. Um, I hope you found this useful. If you've got any questions whatsoever, then do feel free to ask and put all your comments down below. Um, give it a thumbs up if you did like it, found it useful. Um, if you are interested, like say in the camper conversion, there's been a little pop-up card that appears 
uh, up there now and again uh, which will be kind of links to the series of camper van um, conversion stuff that I've been doing so far and um, if you're not already subscribed and you think this is the kind of content you'd be interested in and obviously all the other gadgets and everything else that I do then um, you know feel free to be a subscriber too and hit that little bell so it goes ding 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 when I put a new video up I do a new video probably every once or twice a week so thanks very much for watching. Like I say, any questions whatsoever, just ask away in the comments section down below. And you take care, and I'll catch you on the next video. Bye.